Lord, we pray that you will open your word to us. We are listening, Lord. Speak. Indeed, speak to us. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 27 to 31, the first part, and then from Genesis 2, verse 15. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And then from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. And then our gospel lesson for today is from Luke 12, verses 15 to 21. And he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The psalmist says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies proclaim God's handiwork. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the world and their words to all the world. So from that, I get that the earth is designed to reflect the glory of our great creator, God. But is the message getting through? We all know a planet is in trouble. Human activities are a key to the degradation of nature in spite of certain natural phenomena leading to changes. We convert land from wilderness to agricultural use to industrial use, and it's got consequences. Habitat is lost to wild creatures. And there is a sad tragedy of accelerating extinction of insects, birds, animals, trees. About a third of the trees are threatened on planet Earth and plants as well. 
we use sometimes very unsustainable farming methods. Pesticides, fertilizers, they do more harm than good. The alarming rate of insect death is going to have repercussions for everything, not only pollination, but food for insects. We, we saw recently the mismanagement that took place in, in many places with just leaving buildings and toxic waste just seeps into the environment. That uh, burning of that chemical factory in Durban, remember seeing about that on te television? Well, it's still ongoing, the beaches are still closed. There's toxic waste that has spilled into water and is a disaster. We watch some programs called Abandoned Engineering. And unfortunately, when a factory is, is no longer in use in many countries of the world, it's just left. And it causes extreme damage. Toxic poisons spill all over the place. And we waste and damage our environment. Of course, there are extreme weather patterns. Temperatures rose faster since 1970 than in any other 50-year period over the last 2,000 years. There's been a report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It was released only this August, and it said that we could re reach that critical 1.5 warming limit of the Earth by the 2030s. Emissions of carbon, methane, nitrous oxide, they all add up to global warming. 85% of carbon dioxide emissions are from burning fossil fuels, are coal, and so forth. And land deforestation, deforestation it's, it's causing a lot of trouble. And then the nitrous oxide from nitrogen fertilizers used on crops. And so the story will go on. Some people say there's no hope. Some scientists say, no, there's still hope. We can turn this around. What do we say? What do we do about this? Because as Christians, we believe that God is the creator of this beautiful planet Earth. And it's designed to show people something of the glory of God. We must have something to say and do about this. In the first place, the earth is meant to reveal something of the splendor and beauty of God. The heavens are meant to proclaim the glory of God. But if the skies are blocked through pollution and smog and forests are just burnt, how will people see the glory of God? Are we part of the problem? If we just stand by and allow the world to be damaged and corrupted and degraded, aren't we complicit in not allowing people to see the glory of God? We as God's children should do all we can to allow people to see the beauty, the majesty, the glory of God by taking good care of the earth and all God's creatures. Do you agree with that? We've got a job to do, to take care of God's creation. That includes people, that includes all creatures, that includes all of nature. Everyone, especially those who claim to be followers of Christ, should be taking care of the earth. We who claim to be Christ followers, we've got a mandate from God to sustain and develop the earth to the best interests of earth. God has appointed us as stewards, caretakers, managers of everything God has given. I'm accountable to God for all I do and for all I have. We Methodists, every year in the covenant service, what do we say? We make a pledge to God. We say, I'm no longer my own. I'm yours. 
all that I am, all that I have belongs to me, mm -mm. belongs to God. It's lent to me. Now, I had a mother who used to drill into me. If you borrow something, you had better look after it very, very well. And don't you dare give it back in a, in a worse state. You give it back in a better state, if at all possible. Doesn't this include our stewardship of the earth? We lent this earth. We lent this nature around us for a while to look after. My life, my possessions, this world, and all creatures are rightfully God's. I'd better look after them very well. Now, in Genesis 1, there's this word dominion, where God says, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds, etc., etc. Everything. Have dominion over it. And some people have used this as an excuse to trample, control, abuse, consume unsustainably, to exercise power over nature, as if this natural world is just disposable. Chuck it away when you don't need it anymore. But in contrast, if we look at the dominion of Christ, how does Christ exercise power? How? It's servant leadership. It's looking for the best interest of the other. He laid down his life for his friends, for us. The model of Christ is the best model to follow in thinking of having dominion over the earth. It's having that sort of servant leadership of Christ. And this fits in well with the second chapter of Genesis where it talks about God set people to till and keep the earth. And that word used, keep, is the same word that is used in Hebrew when Cain asks God, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? And the implication of that passage is, yes, you jolly well are. And so, yes, we have a responsibility to do what we can to foster the well-being of our brothers and sisters, all human creatures, all animal creatures, all of creation, to seek and find ways to care for, to sustain, to keep this amazing world of ours, and so that it can carry on producing God's blessings to all food, beauty, that reflect the glory of God and the generosity of our gracious God. Isn't God generous? We've just been in the bush and we've seen such variety of butterflies and dragonflies. And we were laughing at the elephants. They were doing such crazy things like rubbing their backs on, on tree stumps and uh, playing in the water with such glee. God's creatures. But what's Earth's destiny? Is the Earth bound for destruction or renewal? Now, some, some Christians think, oh, it's just going to burn up in the end, so why bother? And they take one little isolated verse from 2 Peter, and they'll do another verse here and there and say, this world's going to burn up. What does it matter what we do? But... Other Christians say, no, God is going to renew the face of the earth. And they take verses like John 3.16. We know that one well, don't we? It says, God so loved the world. And that word for world is cosmos. And that includes everything. And we pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And then there's the mystery that God intends to gather all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. That's from Ephesians 1, 9 to 10. Heaven and earth. And we puzzle over what does God mean in Romans chapter 8, 21, when he, he talks about setting creation free. 
from its bondage to decay. He's not talking about obliterating it. And we wonder how will God reconcile to himself all things, whether in heaven or on earth, Colossians 1. We conclude that God loves all that God has created and plans to renew the heavens and the earth. So, if that's the case, it really matters how we treat, how we treat creation. We can't continue to be complicit or actively damaging and trashing the world. If we do that, we are dishonoring God, our creator. And we are also profoundly disrespecting future generations. I fail to understand why anyone with children and grandchildren, anyone with compassion and caring for the needs and well-being of other human beings will not do all they can to make this world a better place. The earth is the Lord's. It's a precious, good creation. It was created and declared Good. Remember that was in our reading from Genesis 1? God's glory and God's greatness is revealed in the natural world. This is called the first revelation. And then the special revelation in and through Christ and as we read in scripture. But what can we do? It's such a daunting problem. For God's sake, do something. We've got elections coming up. We've got to really start thinking how we can hold our leaders, our authorities accountable to take better care of the environment. It's just not acceptable that there's sewage running around in the streets. And our kids have got to walk through that. And that's happening in several places in our land today, in 2021. We must try to make our authorities see that they've got to deliver better services for cleansing sewage systems and cleaner air. Let's do what we can. One thing we can all do is examine how we live, examine our lifestyles. What impact are we having on the environment? So many people and nations live on debt. And this leads to a constant wanting more and consumerism and hoarding and collecting more wealth. We live in a never enough culture. The rich fool in our gospel reading, he wanted to build bigger barns, amass more, and he had this craving for security and abundance. And we see rich fool ethics in all the competitiveness, the self interest, the excessive overdoing consumption, more, more, more. And all of this is contributing to the earth's degradation. In contrast, we Christ followers can aim to choose gratitude. Choose gratitude. Choose generosity. My dad used to say often, there's always someone worse worse off than you are. So open your eyes and share. Let's share concern for the well-being of others and all creation. When we pray the Lord's Prayer and we come to give us this day our daily bread, let's ask God to help us to really trust God for whatever we need instead of being anxious instead of hoarding. 
And let's repent of any way in which we are part of this rich fool ethics. Let's challenge it by being generous to those in need because God is ever so generous to us. We can never repay God. At the moment, Jeff and I, my husband Jeff, hello Jeff, there he is. <laughs> he, he's going to come and preach here in a few weeks. We uh, are part of a group called Rotary International, and one of the projects they have at the moment is protecting planet Earth, and they are making sure that there are um, a replenishment of the Allopeglera, which is being endangered because people have been stealing them all over the Michalisburg Mountains. And they've been supplying and planting more. And they've been caring for vulture um, conservation and teaching schools about it. Um, God's creatures. Our church joined with Rotary and BirdLife to clean up the Hatbiesput Dam. What can you do here at Cineville to make a difference to the environment? And so... Let us take care of the earth so that we and future generations may have our daily bread and be able to see something of the glory of God in creation. Let's be obedient to God's mandate to be stewards, to keep, sustain, and develop the best interests of earth in partnership with God for the healing and wholeness of humanity and all creation. Amen. Our prayer. Prayer of confession. If there are any words in blue, please repeat with me. I mean, please say with me. Creator God, we confess that we have not always guarded against greed and wastefulness. All too often our lifestyles have been marred by over-anxiety about having enough and a failure of trust in you to provide for our real needs. In our zeal to acquire and hoard more material goods, we've often avoided the cry of the needy. We who live in pleasant places confess that we, have often, we are often shielded from the environmental damage and degradation that the poor contend with daily. We've been slow to care for the well-being of all creatures, great and small, and are thus complicit in the extinction and suffering of species. Forgive us. And help us to be better partners with you in sustaining, revitalizing, and restoring the beauty and well-being of earth. Help us to truly care for all creation. Develop in us true gratitude. And help us to be good stewards of your gifts of precious resources, like water and energy, so that we can serve more and waste less. May we who gather here as a church family and those who are gathering over Zoom learn to worship you and serve you with reverence and joy. Lord, hear us. May the people of the world and the leaders of the nations learn to work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. May those who are ill or in trouble, the lonely and bereaved, be comforted and sustained. Lord, hear us. We remember before you those who have died, giving thanks for the example of those who have shown us your way of life. May they inspire us to be ever faithful to you 
and finally share with them in your everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing the Lord's Prayer. And now we come to Holy Communion. The peace of God be with you. Perhaps you'd like to look around and just uh, greet one another. We can't do it as we, we normally like to because of this COVID, but we can just share our contact. Peace, everyone. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah. God of Miriam and Moses. God of Joshua and Deborah. God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit 
on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are publicly proclaiming Jesus Christ and his death for us. And we will continue to do this until he comes again in glory. Amen. Take and eat. Feed on Christ in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You may come forward. There will be some music playing in the background as we receive Holy Communion. Father, thank you for refreshing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion with you strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we can sing together the wonderful video, and you'll know the tune by different words. We seek your kingdom. We seek to be God's Kingdom Partners. We seek your kingdom
else still has offering I think you brought it up during Holy Communion let us pray please be seated dear Lord we come to dedicate our offerings to you not only a portion of our resources but the wealth of our talents our time our thinking our working our loving and caring for your will and work on earth and thank you that you will indeed transform and heal society as we take our part. And so bless this church, bless these givers, make us to be a difference in the world, those who really care for others, for the world. In and through the strong name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much to all who were involved in any way. Thank you for doing the sound and the sorting out at the back there. And to those on duty, all these extra duties with COVID, thank you very much for making the service possible. And thank you for your warm welcome. We're now going to bless one another. Those, those would like to still bring offering up. Let's bless one another. May the Father's love enfold us, the grace of Christ uphold us, the Holy Spirit guide us, and the one God walk beside us. Amen. And we'll stand and sing the last blessing. <laughs> 